Hello, I'm Brian Spendolini, and I'm an Azure SQL Database Product Manager. And I'm here to show you how to create a change data stream in minutes with .NET, Azure SQL, and Azure Functions. So before we get into building this, let's talk about the three main stars of this uh, demo we're going to see. First is Azure SQL, which is an enterprise database. And though we're going to be talking about the Azure SQL database, um, this, this, these SQL bindings can go and work against uh, the Azure SQL database, as I said, the managed instance, uh, the Azure SQL VM, or even SQL Server if you have cloud connectivity. All we need is that a work and connect stream. Next, we're going to be using Azure Functions, and these are serverless runtime uh, environments for standalone code. And in there, we'll actually have that SQL binding that's going to be used for triggering and seeing changes in our database. And one of the great things about Azure Functions is not only can we write these functions using C Sharp, but we can also use Java, JavaScript, Python, and PowerShell. So any of the popular languages today, but today, obviously, we're going to concentrate on using C Sharp. So there are three SQL bindings uh, for Azure Functions. Now, the first one is an input binding. An input binding can be used to expose data from your database. So you can create a REST service on the data in your database. So we can expose tables, we can expose views, um, stored procedures, and, and show them and expose them data so you can consume them in other applications or maybe even with other databases for if you're syncing data or if you want to create an application on top of it that will use this REST service. Next is the output binding. And the output binding uh, acts as basically doing an upsearch of data into a table. So you create the output binding on a table and then you can use post uh, via REST and pass data into that table and then it'll upsert that data into the table. Uh, an upsert basically means if the row exists, uh, it'll update it. But if it does not exist, it will insert it for you. The last one is the one that we're going to be looking at today. And this is the SQL trigger. Now, the SQL trigger using the change tracking functionality of the SQL database allows you to capture changes that are performed on a particular table. So if an update, a delete, or an insert happens on that table, we can capture that row and then bring it into the trigger. And then you could do multiple things with it, which we'll talk about in a second. So what are some of the use cases we can have for these bindings or for the trigger binding? Um, we can use them to take data or content within our database and then send them over to maybe Azure OpenAI or Azure Cognitive Services. So let's say we're inserting uh, maybe comments or a blog posts or something like that into our database, we can hand it off to uh, content management or um, co cognitive services and say, does this particular piece of text or this paragraph have dangerous items such as profanity, PII, or maybe self-harm, um, talking about those particular categories. And then once we get that score back, we can do something with that either not inserted or uh, corrected or update that. Um, we can also you know, use these for geocoding data in our database. Um, we can also use this trigger for starting complex processing. Something happens in that database, an insert happens that goes above a threshold or a certain point. We can go launch this, this event and then go do something with it and start a process, maybe updating a website, as we see with the next use case using Signal R, or maybe updating a Power BI uh, data uh, model in the background, the semantic model, and updating that so our Power BI reports have the freshest data in them. One of the very popular methods or one of the popular architectures we see today is event-based architectures. So triggering this data change will actually send this, uh, this row or these rows uh, over to uh, Azure Event Hubs or maybe a Kafka instance. And then now you can have this database participate in event-based architectures, which we see with microservices and are very popular today. And lastly, this all uh, goes to creating that change data stream, capturing events, and maybe sending them over to uh, stream analytics. Maybe we're looking for fraud. Maybe we're looking for certain changes in our data that we want to capture and alert someone with. We can do that with these bindings. So our scenario that we're going to tackle today is how can I leverage the change tracking features in Azure SQL database? or as I said before, SQL Server, Managed Instance, or Azure SQL VM, to expose data changes via an outgoing change stream uh, without the need for custom code or any code at all, 
um, because I don't want to write any code. I want this to be as easy as possible. I want the system or I want VS Code or I want the extension to completely write this for me. I want this to be no code, low code environment. So before we get into the demo, we'll just look quickly at the architecture. So our architecture starts obviously with our database and we're going to be updating what we call the to-do table. And we're going to be changing some data in that to-do table to trigger the binding. Uh, once that trigger binding sees the change, it's going to get the complete row. And then there is where your imagination can run wild. Once that row hits uh, that trigger or inside of that function, we can hand it off to, as I said, Azure Event Hub or we can send it to another database. We can combine a trigger binding and an output binding and grab it and put it to another database. So we're syncing data between multiple instances. Uh, really, you can do a lot with, with that row, that change row, once it's in that function. So let's start and let's see this demo right now. So our demo environment here is, as I said before, is running in a GitHub code space. We have everything we need to do to run and create this trigger here. So we can see that we have our SQL database running. Um, and again, that was very easily created using SQL CMD. You just go SQL CMD create database and bam, we have a database running in Docker and Docker. So the first thing we need to do is we need to create some objects in our database. So we'll create a new query here and we're going to create a table. We're going to turn change tracking on within the database, and then we're going to enable change tracking on the to-do table. So we just run this. And now we have our table created in our database. And we can actually see this if we open this up. There's our to-do table. All right. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually create the trigger. Now, the trigger can be created very easily. Um, all we need to do in Git in code space or VS Code is press F1. And F1 is going to bring us to um, allow us to create a trigger using this wizard. So we can just put create, and we're going to go create a function. Right, next, after this function is starting, we're going to use the current directory. And then here's, as I said before, all the uh, languages we can use, and we're going to use C Sharp. We're going to choose .NET as our eight as our runtime. And then what it's going to do, it's going to give us a whole bunch of templates that we can use to create this particular function. And all I need to go down here and just change this to all. And we will see that we have our SQL trigger binding is one of the templates. We just pick that. Uh, we can use the default name. We can use just the default namespace. Our connection string, we'll just call it connection string. And this is what we're going to use in our local settings uh, for the function. Obviously, when you deploy this to uh, Azure, uh, you're going to use manage identities and not a password within the connection string. But for our local development environment, this is fine. And then our table, as we saw before, is going to be the to-do table, the to-do table. All right, and what this is going to do, it's going to go and it's going to create all the project files we need. And if I just switch over here to our view, we'll see all the project styles start, all the projects, I should say, start building and start creating here. And when it's done, we're going to have a fully um, ready to go function that we can use uh, locally and then easily deploy to uh, Azure using the Azure extension right here. So here it is. And here is basically the main code of our function. We see that it's the SQL trigger. We're looking at the to-do table. Uh, here's our connection string. And then what we're going to, the thing that we're just going to do today is we're going to just have the output go and be logged. But here is where per row, you can say, send it to an event hub, send it to a Kafka instance, send it to another database. You can actually embed an output binding in here and say, send it to another database to be inserted. So if you wanted to sync data between two databases, you can do this with our trigger binding here. We just really quickly need to add um, our, a package to our .NET project. And then all we need to do now is we need to go and we need to add our connect string for this local database to our file. And as you see right here, SQL CMD config connection strings and here are all the connection strings. And it's actually already ready for us. We just need the .NET one. And we just grab this 
here and copy it. And connection string is our variable. And as I said, we're going to local settings file here. Connection string. And we will paste in our file here. Um, and as we see, that's actually lowercase. There we go. Connection string. OK. So just go back and look here. No, connection string is uppercase. We have our connection string, local settings. Just put that there. We just need to put our little tick mark there to make it all right and add that and save our file. All right, so we are actually ready to go and test this locally. So we're going to run, jump back here real quick, and we're going to look at our database objects. And here is the SQL we're going to run to make sure to actually see the trigger in action. So what we'll do is we'll go back here, and we'll just get this ready to go. And now, finally, we'll come to our binding. And what we're going to do is in our command line here, going to do start our function and we're going to start it up and what this is going to do it's going to build the project and once the project is built it's going to connect to our database and it's going to start looking at this table and this should just take a second to run here there we go all right it's connected to the database so now that it's connected, we can go in here and say, and we'll just give it some more room here. I'm going to insert this into our database. And there we go. Our trigger has fired. Here, operation is zero is an insert. We see the ID, we see the priority, and we see the description, just as we have from our insert statement. Now I can do an update, and I could just grab this right here. And Put that there and just do an update. And we see the trigger has fired again. We see it's an operation one, which is an update with our ID, our new priority we pass in, which was two instead of one, and the description stayed the same. And if we want to delete it, we can go here and do a delete from the table. And again, the trigger will fire its operation number two. And then we see the ID which is the primary key, and the priority and description are null because it is a deleted row. So that easy, without writing a single piece of code, we were able to create this trigger on a table in the database using .NET and create a function from it. And now all we have to do is deploy this function to the cloud, and we are done. Very, very easy to do. So let's go back to the slides and just wrap this up here. So a quick summary. As you saw, we quickly created a chain stream, a data change data stream with Azure functions with basically no coding whatsoever. We went into the template, we selected our options, we pointed it to the table, and we were done. Very easy to do. And remember, there's three bindings we can use. So there's an input, an output, and a trigger. Today, we used a trigger. And again, Obviously, we're going to use C Sharp today, but if you wanted to use another language, if you are more comfortable maybe in Java or JavaScript, there are templates for all these languages built right into VS Code via the extension. We did local development, and then we're going to deploy it to cloud development. So think of it this way. With our local development, we have uh, our SQL Server local to our code spaces environment. We can test. We can run everything there. And then when we deploy this to the cloud, we can have it, and we'll in the cloud, we'll have that connect string change to use Azure manage or Entra ID managed identities. And that way, we don't have to pass passwords around or anything. And we can just allow access between the function and the database that needs it. And if you want more samples or see how to use any other uh, of the bindings or the input or the output or any, in any other language that we have here, you can go to aka.ms slash SQL bindings. And that'll take you directly to our documentation and our sample repository. So again, thank you very much for watching this uh, presentation on creating a change data stream with Azure Functions, the Azure SQL database, and .NET.